Hello everyone, I hope your study is going well. Today we're going to look at another lesson in the scientific reasoning portion of T's science. And this is about predict relationship among different events, objects, and processes. Now, a lot of content in this lesson is often based on the knowledge that you should know in biology and anatomy and physiology, especially A and P, because a lot of times you will see events happen in the body. And then based on what you know about those events as part of a particular process, you arrange them in the correct order. And I'll have some practice questions that are like that for you to kind of get an idea of what you're looking at. Okay, now the title is the same in T6 and T7. And really just, you know, instead of explain, you are going to predict, which is a more accurate description of what questions you will see on T's, right? You're predicting the order or the relationship. You're not trying to explain anything. Now, the first learning objective is um, very similar you are comparing the magnitude of a different events, objects, and processes. And this is oftentimes about measurements, right? So for example, you may be asked to measure an object and you will be given different metric units, right? And then you need to select the correct, the appropriate unit for that particular object. Something that's not too big, not too small, but the appropriate unit for measuring the size of that object. I have a note here that all the measurements you will see on T's will be based on the metric system because that's what we use in the scientific community. We don't necessarily use imperial system units like here in the US, right? In, for example, when we measure length, we would use foot, right? Or mile here in the US, but in the metric system, it's meter or kilometer. And the next learning objective is about the causal relationship between events. So for some things that we have already determined right, right, with um, sufficient evidence that one thing may cause another, right? For instance, smoking and lung cancer, right? We've already established that smoking um, can cause increased risk of lung cancer. Another example is smoking would increase the uh, risk of high blood pressure. So you might be given um, some examples like these, right, in trying to uh, decide whether there's a causal relationship or not. And the last one is just put things in the logical order or correct the sequence. Um, so even though it's a new objective, it's, it's really just old content that came from T6 because, you know, these learning objectives are pretty much the same. It's just new wording in T7. So all in all, there is a very little change. So let's just uh, go ahead and do some practice questions. Question one. Which of the following units may be most appropriate for measuring the weight of a kidney? So this is what I was talking about earlier, choosing the right measurement unit for a, partic for a particular object, right? The unit cannot be too big or too small. Now, to answer this question, we can actually, we can eliminate D right away because M is a meter, and that's a unit for length. It has nothing to do with the weight. So D is not going to be the correct answer. And then A, B, and C. So are you familiar with these three choices? So kilogram is the largest unit, right? One kilogram is a thousand grams, and that's a little over two pounds. So that's the largest unit. And then gram right? One gram is one thousandth of a kilogram. So it's a much, much smaller unit. And then milligram 
is the smallest unit among the three, because one gram equals 1,000 milligram. So milligram is really, really tiny. This is the smallest. Now, kidneys can vary in weight, right? But on average, it's about one-fifth to one-half of a pound. And something that I need to note is that one pound is 450 grams, roughly. Now, if you have a kidney that's one-fifth to one-half of a pound, which unit would you choose as the most appropriate for the weight of a kidney? Now, when it says most appropriate, that means you're not going to have too many zeros. Okay? You're not going to say a kidney weighs 100,000 milligram, right? That's just the, the number is too big. It's really hard for the human brain to process. On the other hand, you don't want to use a very, very big unit and then have too many decimal places, right? You don't want to say, oh, a kidney is a 0 0.00001 kilogram. Again, that's too many decimal places and hard for the human brain to process. What you want to do in this case, just based on the common knowledge you have about human organs, right? There are about you know, half a pound-ish. Some organs may weigh a pound, right? So for that kind of range of weight, you want to use grams, right? A human kidney may weigh, let's say, 150 grams, right? That's a pretty good number, right, to, to look at to process. Okay, so the correct answer is B. Now, normally, again, for all the human organs um, in the scientific community, we use gram as the appropriate measurement unit. Now, if we do body weight, right? Body weight, you're measuring the entire human body, and that could weigh a lot. So if you use a gram, you're going to have many zeros. In that case, you want to use a kilogram to measure body weight. Because if you weigh, let's say, 150, and you know that one kilogram is roughly two pounds, then you can convert it to approximately 75 kilograms, right? That's pretty good number uh, as a measurement for the body weight. Now, when do you use milligram? Milligram is very, very tiny. Remember, it's, it's such a small amount. Usually, we use milligram when we measure chemicals, right? Because normally, we don't use a huge amount of chemicals, right? When we use a small amount of chemical to, let's say, conduct a scientific experiment, right? We use milligram normally. Or if you are measuring the concentration of hormones in your body, right? Concentrations of ions in your body, then, you know, the unit could be milligram per liter, right? Or a milligram per deciliter. Okay? So in that case, when you measure something that exists in very small concentration in your body or some other solution, then you want to use milligram.